Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to discuss how to get the equation of a calculus graph. Now, when they are asking you to get the equation of a calculus graph, they don't always give you the drawing. But what is important is the information. There's usually two styles. Number one, the first style is where they give you x-intercepts and they give you a random point. In this case, they are giving me the x-intercepts and they're giving me one random point. When we are given this information, then we use the formula f of x is equal to a into x minus x1, x minus x2, x minus x3. Now this formula should be familiar till here because that is the same formula you use in functions when you are trying to solve for a parabola when you are given x-intercepts. So this is an extension of that equation. Now what we're going to do is, funny enough, it works exactly like that equation, equations of a function. If you are not familiar with that, you should go over that section before you come into this section, which is your grade 11 functions. How to get the equation of function graph, specifically the parabola. Now what are we doing? So the first rule is substitute your x-intercept. That means we're going to take our minus 2, our 1 and our 6 and we're going to substitute it into our x1, x2 and x3. So we have x minus minus 2 because remember the equation has a minus and then the coordinate has a minus. Then we have x minus 1 and x minus 6. Next, we're going to substitute the point in. Now, the point would be any random point. They don't need to give it on the x-intercept or on the y-intercept. They can give it to me anywhere they want. Any random point they want to give. So, I'm going to substitute 0 and minus 12 into my x and y. Now, this represents my y. So, I've got minus 12 is equal to a 0 minus, minus 2, which gives me plus 2. 0 plus 2, 0 minus 1. 0 minus 6. Now, what I've seen children do is they have this and then they start doing the whole kitty cat and simplifying. That's not necessary. You do kitty cat or you do simplifying when there are two different types of terms in the brackets. When the brackets are the same, then you just add them up. So I have a into 2 times minus 1 is minus 2 times negative 6 is 12. And on the side, I got minus 12. So to solve for a, I'm going to divide by 12. And then I have a is equal to minus 1. So what is my equation? Because the question is, get the equation of the calculus graph. It is y f of x or y is equal to minus 1, open brackets, x plus 2, x minus 1, x minus 6. Right. If they say, we want the following equation in the form of ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Then they are testing your simplifying, which is grade 10 work. Now you have to get rid of all these brackets using your simplifying. Remember, this is grade 10 work. If you are not familiar with this, go over your grade 10 work under simplifying. It's about the first section in grade 10, where you have to do the whole kitty cat and you have to do the rainbow. So we're going to start with these two brackets, which is x squared plus x minus 2 into x minus 6. And then we're going to get rid of this. All right, so we first we got rid of the first two brackets, now we got rid of the third bracket, and last we get rid of the negative. Minus 1x cubed plus 6x squared minus x squared plus 6x plus 2x minus 12. We can join the like terms, giving us a final answer of minus 1x cubed plus 5x squared plus 8x minus 12. That is the first style. Now let us look at the next question. The second 
type of question that they can give you is where they give you the turning points and they give you a point. Now when they're giving you a turning point, you know that derivative is equal to m, which we had always linked when to you did the turning derivative, point. you made it equal to zero and then that was your turning points. Right. The second thing you know is that if I give you the turning points, the turning points when you did derivative, then you got minus 3x squared plus 2ax plus b is equal. We know when we have turning points, we do the derivative which is equal to m related to the turning point, but more importantly, it's equal to 0. So if I do derivative of this equation and I make it equal to 0, then I know I'm working with the turning point. But also, your turning point is the same as saying a x minus x1 x minus x2. Now why? Because all derivatives for a cube function is a parabola. And the turning points on the cube function are the x-intercepts of your parabola. So if you were to do the drawing of this graph, we know it's a negative graph, which means it's a sad graph. So the derivative would also be sad. But more importantly, the turning points would be the x-intercept of your derivative. Your derivative. Now, what I'm trying to say is that this graph that I drew is the graph for your derivative. The function, the derivative is a parabola. And how do we get the equation of a parabola? a into x minus x1, x minus x2. That is the function, the parabola. So if you are not familiar with how to get the equation of a parabola, then you need to go to the previous videos we had done functions and where it tells you how to get the equation. Now, we know that the a is going to be the same. So this is going to be minus 3. Then we have x minus minus 2 and x minus 2, which will give me minus 3 into x plus 2, x minus 2. If you get rid of your brackets, we have minus 3, x squared minus 4, which is equal to minus 3x squared plus 12. Now, the equation that we have here, where we've done the derivative, and the equation that we have here, that is exactly the same. So let's line them up. So we have minus 3x squared plus 2ax plus b, and then we have minus 3x squared plus 0 plus 12. Now from that, we can see the value of b by lining it up. b is equal to 12. We know that 2a is going to equal to 0. So a is equal to 0. But that solves my a problem and my b problem. So we had done derivative of the original. Then we had gotten another form of derivative by using our parabola formula, but what was important was the a. The a, you had to get the a from your first derivative. So the a is also coming from number one. And that way you solved for half the equation. Now, to solve for the rest, you must substitute your remaining point into the original. Now what does that mean? I have that f of x is equal to minus x cubed, 0 x squared, plus 12 x plus c. Now where am I getting the 0 and the 12 from is what I've just calculated. And then, how do I get c? You're going to take the other point you have, which is 0 and minus 16. 
you're going to put minus 16 in y is equal to minus 0 cubed plus 0 plus 12 into 0 plus c. That would make c equal to minus 16. And now you've solved for a, b and c. Thank you for watching.